Hello, and welcome to Maintaining Your Mental Health During a Lockdown. With me, Rima. Have you been finding that time has no meaning anymore? Or that you are stuck in the four walls of your house where you're working and sleeping and seeing your friends and spending time with your family and eating and playing and existing? Have you been falling asleep at your computer, also known as Zoom fatigue? Well, let's have a conversation about maintenance of your mental health. So when we're talking about stress, the first thing that we need to talk about is the human brain. The human brain in the middle of the brain has a structure called the amygdala. The amygdala is also known as the fear center of the brain. Now, when we have something that stresses us out or makes us afraid, it kind of, the idea kind of gets stuck in the amygdala. So what happens is, in our fear center, we kick into a response called the fight or flight response. Now, when the fear center is active, what happens is we have an increased heart rate. So for example, your heart rate goes faster, boom, 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 boom. We have an increased breathing rate. So your breathing goes from deep to shallow. So from the base of your stomach and your diaphragm up to your chest. Then we have an increase of muscle tension, so your body will go from irregular to kind of tight. You might also feel like you get stuck on one idea, that it's harder to say what you mean and it's harder to remember things because this one idea is swirling around in your brain. Also, you may experience stomach indigestion issues, dry mouth, acid, um, increased acid, or uh, what some Indian people call acidity, nausea, not being hungry, experiencing diarrhea or constipation. Now, even if you are experiencing a lot of these things, sometimes in children, youth, and adults, it manifests as feeling ill, angry, frustrated, or sad. And also, a secondary impact could be sleep disturbance and trouble focusing which is very challenging when we have things to do. So the big question that we have to ask today is, what can we do about this? So, for our purposes today, I'm gonna to be using the acronym GOAL. GOAL stands for ground to now, orient to here, do some activity, and let out your feelings. So let's talk about grounding for a second. I'm gonna focus on meditation and something called 335 breathing. Meditation, we're going to see some videos later in the week, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, but I wanted to explain the science really quickly. Meditation helps us slow the mind because we increase the focus on our breath and it connects us to this moment rather than the thoughts that are swirling around in the fear center of our brain. Also, from a Jane perspective, slowing our minds down helps us live with peace and stillness, helps us increase considerations on how we can live in a more ahimsic way. Our second grounding topic is 335 breathing. So, the way that it works is like this you're going to breathe in through your nose for three, hold for three, and then you're going to breathe out through your mouth for five. So, let's practice it a couple times together. So we're going to practice our 335 breathing skill together. I'll count you into the first one and then I'll do the next two with you. So in through your nose for three, one, two, three, hold for three, one, two, three, out through the mouth for five, one, two, three, four, five. Nose. Mouth. One more time, nose. Mouth. Now, let's talk about why this works. I mentioned a moment ago that I would talk a little bit about focus on the breath. Focus on the breath and when we breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth, we are engaging in a conscious breathing process. What that means is we are allowing our body to know that we're actually safe and the heart rate can go down and our breathing does not have to be as intense. So our breathing will go from this breathing up here 
to this nice deep diaphragmatic breathing down here which will then in turn decrease our heart rate and this functions both when you are doing meditation and when you are doing 335 breathing our next skill set is our O skills so orient the first skill that we're going to look at is the 54321 skill which is five things you see four things you can touch three things you can hear two things you can smell and one thing you can taste I'll explain what it is first and then we can go practice it together. So first, when we consider the science of it, what we are doing is we are actively observing the present, which reminds us that we're safe and shifts our focus from the swirling ideas in our mind and our stressors. Also, from a Jane perspective, the 54321 skill helps us to be in the moment without judgment. So we are looking um, touching, hearing, smelling, and tasting things, but we are not trying to um, judge whether or not those things are good or bad, simply that they are. Hi, so um, five things that I can see include a piece of Himalayan salt, a marker, a container of tea, um, a pasta container, and a pepper shaker. Four things I can touch include this water bottle, um, this container of sanitizer, uh, this large container of multiple sanitizers, and um, my hair. Um, three things that I can hear include the sound of the tea, the sound of the markers, and the sound of the pasta. Two things that I can smell include the sanitizer, and maybe a marker, and one thing that I can taste is water from the water bottle. The idea of this activity is that you want to try to use objects that you have in your home. You don't have to do it like this in front of you, but you just look around. You try to find objects that are in your home, but the idea is that you want to engage with what's happening in the present moment. Let's continue. Our next Orient skill is going to be the form of active skill practice. And in, for our cases, it's going to be mantras. Now, there are going to be several mantras videos coming out this week, so I just wanted to briefly explain the science of learning a new skill, because it activates a different part of the brain rather than the fear center, which offers you the opportunity to get out of the fear center and therefore become a little bit calmer. Also, from a Jain perspective, mantra practice is a repetition of the goals and focus of Jainism and what you would like from your Jane practice. Our next set of skills is going to be our active skills. So we're gonna talk a little bit about yoga and we're gonna talk about mindful walking. Now, yoga, we're going to see some videos later in the week. However, the science behind yoga and mindful walking is actually quite similar. So moving your body means that you feel less stuck and you feel more in control. It also increases your awareness of your breath and helps you engage in your surroundings, especially if you're outside because you're getting more air and more sun. In Jainism, we have actually a lot of emphasis on the idea of being mindful when we are moving through the world and moving in our surroundings. What mindfulness means is being in the present moment. So in Jainism, they say increased focus creates an ahimsic walking practice, which means we are less likely to hurt other beings if we are actually walking with care, compassion, and when we are in the present. What does a mindful walking practice look like? Well, so when we're doing the skill of mindful walking, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we know how we're breathing. So we want to be able to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, as we described earlier, or um, do some of that meditative breathing that you'll learn about later in the week, or you've learned about in the past in different places. Um, the other thing about um, doing mindful walking as an exercise is um, when you're walking you want to make sure you know where all of your limbs are and how they are interacting with different things so for example 
you should know where your arms are and how they're interacting with the world around you. You should know how your legs are moving and where your feet are actually touching things. Now, the interesting thing about this is that this practice has existed in Jainism for a very long time. So a lot of our sadhus and sadhvis actually practice this very regularly where they are trying their best to make sure that they are interacting with the world in such a way where they are not hurting any other beings. So, maybe give it a try. Let us know how it goes. Our final skill is our L skill, letting your feelings out. We're going to be talking a little bit about journaling and painting. And I'm going to be doing this one a little bit differently. So, when we have a lot of swirling thoughts, sometimes it's super important to actually get them out of your head. One of the ways to do this is by journaling. Some people write, some people draw. There's really no wrong way to journal. Some people use different languages or codes. Basically, the purpose is just getting these thoughts out of your head. Now, the next step to journaling though, the very important, a very important step, is close the journal when you're done. Uh, what, whether it's an app, whether it is a um, a book because what you want to do is this is actually an exercise in containment you want to contain the thoughts so that they're not just hanging out all over the place this way you actually will be able to get other things done so the important thing to know about containment is that we want to get these I, these thoughts out of our head so that we can actually use other parts of our brain because the fear center is actually quite uh, engaging and actually takes up a lot of energy. So once we get rid of the swirling thoughts that are in here, we actually can do other things. And that's an extremely important skill to be able to have. So if you've ever heard the fact that there are two sides to the brain, you might have heard one side being called the left or the right, but also that one side is called the rational and the other side is called the emotional side of the brain. Now, the interesting and relevant part of this is that when we do art, we are actually engaging with the emotional side of the brain rather than the rational side. So creation of art, for example, painting or drawing, actually activates and uses our emotions more than if we were to do writing. So uh, one of the reasons that there's a lot of value in doing any sort of artistic expression for your feelings is because when you have stressors that come in, they often lodge themselves into the emotional part of the brain. So for our purposes, it's actually extremely useful to make art because it actually allows us to take out and process some of those big feelings in the brain. Hey guys, my buddy here and I hope that you've been enjoying the videos that have been uh, posted so far and that you will continue to watch our videos for the rest of the week. Um, please let me know if you tried any of these different uh, skills. Um, you're welcome to reach out to us on Instagram. Um, TikTok, or any of our other social media platforms. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Have a great day, and let's hope we can reduce some of that stress. Bye.